Maybe that's why his his like voice got like really slurry and like sort Maybe. of drawly like as time went on sort of thing. Dolph just punched I, him I a couple of times. A, I have a surprise. What? Okay. So, you know, we were talking about doing a bodega special this week. Uh -huh. This is interesting that we were talking about this. There is so just to give anyone some background on this, uh a teacher, I think he's in America, sent me a bunch of bodega stories that his class had written because he read them a, one of the bodegas. I don't know which one he read, but he he tidied it up a bit. He took smoking out and, and uh, you know, stuff like that. He, he took out all the swearing and stuff. Flav, he left in, because obviously that's cool. And he, he read them the story, and then he, he asked them to write their own stories, and they've written a bunch of stories, and he sent them to me. Mm. Okay, and one of them is called Nicolas Cage. No fucking so way. So I want to, yes, I, I want to see what, what this story is. It's called Nicolas Cage. Do you want to hear okay. it? Okay. It's just that's the title of a bodega that's story. It. So hang on, there's a, a how, how old are these children? They're, I think they're like 11 years old. Right. Okay. So, and uh, he said to me wow. that these kids are like, it's like an inner city school. The, the kids are, you know, they're, they're not generally excited by the idea of doing schoolwork, the way most kids are at 11, I guess. But these kids were really genuinely excited to be able to write something and they liked the bodega stories and i, I mean god only knows if, if i was on the school board this teacher would be in big trouble i would say to him you're meant to stick to the curriculum mr crab apple not read bodegas but fair play it's what bodega would have done anyway here's the yeah. story you ready uh, yeah yeah i'm ready yeah yeah, yeah, yeah this absolutely. is bodega part special part 1.4 brackets nicholas cage i don't know why it's called that 1.4 well yeah that's, that's it's listed as number maybe 1. he want, maybe he he ha is a visionary and he sees nicholas cage potentially um playing the role of bodega in a future film let's find out Bodega's head felt groggy and faint as he shifted his fingers to turn the metal steering wheel of his spaceship. Maybe it was too many hefty cups of space coffee for just the mere thought of the smooth ceramic of a mug against his lips felt disgusting and repulsive. Man, this guy's already better than me at writing. What the fuck? <laughs> it was almost comical how the substance made to give him energy at this point only drew it from him. That's nice. Jake, can you cover me for a bit? I'm feeling under the weather, Bodega called to his assistant, his eyes feeling heavy and stomach tying itself into unsteadying knots. China, Jake replied, patting <laughs> Bodega's shoulder and encouraging him to get up, taking his place. Jake grabbing the wheel excitedly as Bodega drudged towards his bunk. He threw himself onto his bed and let his eyes fall heavy, letting out a relieving breath. He drifted awake, a gentle face smiling over him. He furrowed his slicing brow, noticing that he'd never seen the handsome stranger's face before. Hello, sir, I am Nicholas Cage, he smiled, <laughs> offering his hand to help Bodega out of his bed. <laughs> Bodega took his hand and straightened his posture, looking around slightly suspiciously. Where's Jake? Bodega asked, picking up his hat off of the side table and placing it in the usual spot on his head. Jake is out looking for supplies, he stated kindly. While you were dozing off, he landed here. I saw this vessel and he let me in. Sad to say that he may be dead now, though. Bodega's smile dropped from his face. And why would that oh be, God. he asked, still in shock of what he was hearing. There's a pretty bad monster out there, one that eats people. Takes a few months to fully eat a corpse. You never really see it, but it comes back nightly to feed. Bodega hung his head. Right. That's a real shame, he responded. I'm sorry about him, Nick said apologetically. <laughs> Space coffee? <laughs> Bodega smiled. <laughs> Only if you know how to make it, he grinned, walking towards the kitchen. <laughs> I don't know where this is going! <laughs> no, you wait, you wait. Bodega oh started to God. notice, after several days, that Nick was trying to seduce him. Nick would, <laughs> oh, no! Whoa. Nick would flip his oh, hair at him and wink, flexing proudly. This happening more often than he would like to admit. The animal might be on our basement now, Nick told him that day, so just don't go down there, trust me. Oh, we hey. Well, we'll find out. Weeks they're like later, in suburbia somewhere making <laughs> no, coffee for each other. The, the, this is, they're like on a spaceship and a house, I don't know. Weeks right. later, Bodega journeyed into the basement for more space coffee beans, forgetting what Nick had recommended. The stairs seemed creakier than usual. Peering around the corner, <laughs> grabbing some coffee beans out of the corner of his eye, he saw a figure, its mouth splattered in blood, eating the remains of a corpse wearing a flannel shirt. The remains of Jake. Without uh -oh. hesitation, no. he drew his gun and fired seven quick rounds, shooting the creature onto the ground. As he approached the corpse, a horrified look glided across his face. The monster was Nick! <laughs> Tears bloomed into his eyes, falling onto the ground like rain, flowing down his face like water out of a sink. Nick, he mumbled, wiping his face, <laughs> failing to stop the tears. All at once, he noticed how much he loved Nick, how much he'd paid to taste his delicious burned space coffee just one more time. <laughs>
<laughs> he picked up Nick's head, allowing his tears to drip on his rested, beautiful face. Bodega had been so foolish, he'd fallen deeply in love with Nicolas Cage, and now his heart had snapped in two. His girlfriend was nothing, Jake was nothing, but Nick could never become nothing. Nick's blood was on his hands, it was his fault! He felt like he was gonna throw up. He was truly, sickly, stupidly in love. The end. Why the f <laughs> Why was he eating Jake? I don't get it! <laughs> I don't know. Oh my god! Oh my god, did Nicolas Cage love Bodega I don't too? Know. I think he was, was flirting with him and him? stuff, wasn't he? So like, probably. Or maybe he was seducing him with the intent to kill him and eat him. What a terrific story. That was great. Who, who wrote that? that Can we was... get a round of applause for... What's his name, though? Author yes. of Nicolas Cage, The Bodega Story. Hey! Yeah, haven't got the name, but whoever you are, that was magnificent. Oh, you're the best. Holy shit. Thank you for the oh my God. comedy cramps. That was great. Oh, God. Oh, jeez. Well, I mean, that, I don't know how we're going to top that now. I think that's... Just <laughs> yeah. All right, well, all see, like you, see you guys next week, then. Thanks yeah, for bye. This. Thanks bye. for watching The Bodega <laughs> That's half an hour. Okay. We're going to be in trouble, yeah? I think that is that is wonderful. Uh, so wow, that was that's the brief, crazy. Uh, Holy shit. Yeah. So here's one called. Uh, so I'll read you the titles. You tell me which one you want to hear. Right. Space fe space feminist. Yes. <laughs> go. <laughs> wait, Straight wait, away. Wait. wait you, no, no, you no, don't no, even just know. Just go. The Glorga flop. No. Uh, <laughs> space feminist for me. I want. I want the. Feminist you want to hear one. this one? Because okay, yeah, some of the, one yeah. of them's called Booty Hole. Are you sure? Oh, you want to hear okay. Booty, booty, hole? booty Hole. Yeah. Go Booty we Hole. We have to go through all, all right, of them. Yeah. All right. Let's do Space right. Feminist. I, I read this one on stream the other night, and it's it's gold. Okay. Go. This is, this is a short okay. one. Uh, this is written by a young girl, okay? Okay. Smoke filled the undercrowded space warehouse, and Bodega was sweating. He breathed in and out, testing the waters and stepping out from behind. The large package of illegally ground space coffee. His home base had been infiltrated by a band of radical space feminists, opposed to the illegal space coffee trade. Bodega didn't understand their end game, but wouldn't back down without a fight. He stepped into the mist, and a split second later was grabbed and held with a cosmic knife to his throat. He heard a voice. Thy last words, Bodega. But wait, it was a man's voice. Bodega kicked back, aiming straight for the soft spot. Boom! Right in the baby maker. The man groaned, <laughs> overcome with pain. What are you, a space feminist? said Bodega. What? said the man. And in 0.2 seconds, a tall woman with a red bandana scooped up the man. She lowered the mask. Sorry, this is a dangerous misogynist from the planet Misogynia. We had to remove him from the streets before he hurts more women. I guess he thought you were one. Well, good day. She jumped away as there was very low gravity on the planet. Bodega didn't really know how to feel and suddenly started thinking of why his girlfriend cheated on him. Oh well, he continued with his business. The end. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> That was amazing! I know. Holy shit! So that was- the, uh, the, so there's Bodega's End, which I guess is about the death of Bodega, The Pirate right. King, Confrontation, right. The Crash, Origins of Bodega, Booty Hole, yeah, one yeah, of the teachers is listed as I Am Not Really Sure, one called Memory, one called Pussycat Pussycat Where Are You, and one called Bodega's Hair, brackets, I Think This Kid Does Drugs. Yeah, do that one, right. I don't want to hear okay. that one. All right. Bodega was a strand of hair. He became detached from his human. Then he got a human girlfriend. While he went to the store, she got married and had a stupid child. Then he moved to some stranger's back. He worked as a person who smuggled lice into people's hair. He wanted revenge. One day, he smuggled lice into his ex's hair. She got mad. Then he found out that the child was his. He needed more space coffee. He was a space coffee-holic. He then, he yelled at his girlfriend, specifically the song Billy Jean, and his ex, Bodega, stunned him. He said, you did, you have to do that, and ate a crayon. Because of all the space coffee, he had to throw up, <laughs> but didn't know where that bathroom was, so he threw up upon Mr. Ezzo. Ah, yelled Mr. Ezzo, that's the teacher, Jake Ezzo. Right. China, said Bodega. Bodega's <laughs> girlfriend said, give me some cop. Then they held hands and fell in love. Bodega was alone again, but then he fell in love with female Bodega's boyfriend. They raised the child into a full-grown hair. The end. Man, that guy is like the next up-and-coming <laughs> Twitch chat superstar. For That's sure. Nuts, isn't That's nuts, That's crazy. That is proper nuts. That is bananas. Yep. Okay. That is, that's, <laughs> that was, that was. Let's, do, let's do booty hole. Let's do booty yeah, hole. Yeah, booty okay. hole. This is a short one. <laughs> I'm ready. It's like two paragraphs. It was two years since Bodega caught his girlfriend cheating on him. He was so depressed he took his own spaceship that he built and went up. He had four years worth of food and water. He made it up and it's been two years. He came back. 
just to find out that everyone thought he was dead. He wasn't in the mood for this. He went to the police station and went there. When he walked in, everyone gasped and then cheered. They called his girlfriend and she rushed in. When she got there, he said, fuck off, booty hole. He chilled out and talked to the booty hole. She talked about how much she missed him, but he rejected her and yet again told her to fuck off. She left and told him, I'm sorry, I hate her, he thought to himself. He was outraged. OMG, he was so angry. The end. <laughs> Oh my, my God. God! Are they are they the allowed to use colorful language in? Well, that it was... was asterisked out. Okay, so it could have actually been like oh. shit off, or maybe no. Like... It was like F star star K. All oh, right, so I see. yeah, Fla Flav, Flav off. Yeah, that's, yeah. They could not... have could have dropped a Flav in there. They could have dropped a Flav for two. Yeah, Jesus Man, Christ! Hole. It was pretty. I I still think the the feminist one is the best one so far, though. That was All crazy. Right, what about uh, Bodega's end? Should we try that one? Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Nicolas Cage is the best one for me. Oh yeah, that far. was fun. That was, that was great, great, actually. Holy shit. Bodega and Majesta had been best friends since birth. They were next door neighbours and spent every day after school together. As they grew older, they grew deeper in love. Both of their families could not afford to provide college, so they decided to work together to stay afloat. When NASA made public sorry, when NASA made public applications for people to move to the moon with all expenses paid off, they jumped on it in an instant. Bodega and Majesta lived happily on the moon commune for many years, but many years is not forever. That's great. I love that. War fell upon the two moon colonies. In an effort to stop their family of two from falling into poverty, Bodega began smuggling people from the moon back to Earth. Right. Little did he know, hyperspeed spacecraft had ripped a hole in space time. After a round of people <laughs> smuggling, Bodega was on his usual route coming home. When he arrived, there was a strange moon buggy in the driveway. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Hang on a second! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh. Oh. Oh, he walked me. in and yelled, Honey, I'm home! A woman walked out of the oh, kitchen. No. It was Majesta, eight years older than the last time he saw her. I, I, I thought you were dead, she said. How long has it been? He responded, Eight years. Oh my god. He ran as her new boyfriend shot a laser shotgun towards him, yelling, Get away from my baby! Bodega <laughs> went to the space coffee bar and drank his feels away. Space coffee gets you extremely oh. brackets. Space coffee gets you extremely high. He went to the moon spacecraft exit, clicked the open button, and floated away. He had no spacesuit. The end. Oh man! Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! He committed <laughs> suicide! When you come home Holy to shit. your moon base, that is my favourite one so buggy. far. <laughs> That's uh. not my moon buggy! <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Holy shit! It's like crack, it's like space coffee. Are any of them as good as Booty Hole? Because. I I've only read two. I, I literally only read Space Feminist and the Glorgoflop. I didn't read any of the rest of these. Read that one, the Glorgoflop. Let's have. Right. Flop. Yeah. This is this is quite a long one, but it's good. Okay. This 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 kid really got into the making shit up that makes no sense. Oh, okay, so that's the best part of Bodega. One day, a Malbratostafor named Bodega was oh. walking to a coffee shop Jesus. in space to get his favorite drink, space coffee. Right. He was right. on his way to work. He worked for the Pirate Academy. Right. He had to teach kids how to defy gravity and soar the seas in space. They have to press the no gravity button on the ship and sail the stars, as Bodega liked to say. He passed by a ring shop and thought back to a time where he fell in love with a human girl. It was a balmy day, and Bodega was going to Earth for a short visit to see what Earth coffee really tasted like. Everyone on Earth had never seen a Malbratostafor before, so they thought Bodega was hideous and fled in fear that he would eat their brains out or something in that category. Nice. <laughs> After all, he was a disgusting shade of green, had three eyeballs, but only two sockets, and had not mouth. Bracket, he breathed through his butt. Of then, course. <laughs> Where else would you breathe then through he, he, <laughs> <laughs> then he passed by a park which was very calm and peaceful. There was a human girl sitting on a step stool, painting a portrait of the lake with the trees. At the time, he had never seen a, a tree. The tree the girl was painting actually happened to look a lot like the Malbratostafor's biggest enemy, the Glorgoflop. They were hideous right. beasts about the size of a tree. Bodega was frightened, so he went over to warn the girl. First, he had to destroy her painting because then there would be no proof of Glorgoflop on Earth, which everyone knew wasn't true until now. He had to hide the evidence. <laughs> Bodega went over to the girl and ripped her painting to shreds. He looked into her gorgeous eyes and knew that she was the one. He found out her name was Majesta after she yelled at him for ripping up the painting <laughs> and explaining to him what a tree really is. Later that year, Majesta and Bodega were a happy couple, but something was definitely off. 
Bodega wasn't feeling very in love anymore, so he went back to space to visit his family and his childhood friends. When he went back to Earth, he found out that Magesta had married another man and had a baby. Bodega wasn't too unhappy about it since he wasn't feeling it anymore with Magesta. <laughs> they, said their space, they said their space goodbye, and to this day, never seen each other again. Back to present time, Bodega went into the space coffee shop only to find out they were all out of space coffee, but that oh, there had no. been a new creation called Jupiter Juice. He tried it and spit it in the cashier's face. It was the most disgusting thing Bodega had ever tasted in his whole life. This wasn't very well. This day wasn't very well for Bodega. He knew something no. was up. He took out his rifle, vaporized the cashier, and walked outside with a tip of his hat. All of a sudden, the Gorgaflop swooped down from space and attacked the village. <laughs> Bodega punched one of them in the face. He'd completely forgotten that if you hit them or punch them, they'd grow back another feature. This time, the beast grew back a tail with sharp thorn-like spikes. The alien continued to swing the humongous tail into Bodega's face. Meanwhile, on Earth, Majesta was imprisoned by the Gorgaflop Queen. Tell me, what do you do to him? I want him back. Don't you understand? Do I need to spell it out? W-A-N-T-H-I-M-B-A-C-K to be continued. Wow. Wow. Man. So what, the Gorgaflop Queen wants Bodega? Is that the... No, the, I the... think the Gorgaflop Queen... Did she take Majesta and Majesta's telling the Queen that she wants Bodega back or the other way around? I can't be sure. Yeah, I don't know. Man, how yeah. is Kieran going to animate these? <laughs> God only knows. <laughs> They're so good. Yeah, that's, that's, that, these, these are really good. Uh, it's been a real good one. I Man, really enjoyed those it. Those Bodegas were great. Holy shit, they were so funny. Yeah, we've, oh we've got God, more for so next good. time. We've got more for I next time. I can't wait. Big yeah. up to uh, to the teacher and uh, all those kids. Hey, yeah. well, done, well done. I still haven't played a game as Japan. You know, but you did one as the Nazis the other day. And you I said did. Yeah, to me that's the first that time I ever fun. played as Germany, and it was really fun. And me and Lewis have been playing a game where I played as Italy, and that's been pretty fun as well. Actually, works. Well, well, stop. Stop. You guys have been playing Hearts of Iron without Dude, me. Dude, you were away for like a week. We wanted to play, so we played. <sighs> we're doing good too. Fuck, it, we're doing really good. Like. Let me just get something. Just get my keys here, because I'm fucking leaving. Wow. Oh, get shit. my passport. I'm so, fucking out. Uh, oh shit. Get my, where's, my Prague, yeah. where's my bag? Where's my bag? Back to that. They got a Thai massage. Yeah, he's you. gonna go Jeez. back. He's gonna go stream from the hotel now instead. <laughs> <laughs> Streaming table. I got a new a new podcast called the Casino Reality Podcast. The truth is uh, that Sips and Lewis are Teddy assholes. Teddy baby, are you are you are you ever coming home? No, baby. No. I'm streaming full time from the hotel now and gambling away our life savings. Streaming we table. We have new streaming table <laughs> and streaming a podcasting table. table. Uh, anything you want. We have we, we a podcasting table. special table for you to to store all your life savings on table, and then so you can gamble on gambling table. <laughs> we have drugs <laughs> table. We have gambling <laughs> table. We have prostitutes <laughs> table. We even have whatever just you want. Table table. It's just a table. <laughs> It's, uh, we call it table We table. stack many tables on, on table. It's, it's for tables. <laughs> <laughs> you choose from many tables on this table. <laughs> Fucking hell. Fuck me. Holy shit. Is there a bodega or can we, can we go, uh, today? Well, apparently, um, you just want to go. No, remember we got the kids' bodegas. Oh, got do we still have more kids' bodegas? Oh, yeah, 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 we got some... more, we oh, got shit. more. Okay. I didn't realize. Yeah, we got a few. And we got to trickle them out. It saves you a lot do of effort up. writing a bodega, because you've been away, you haven't had a chance to write bodega. Alright, you ready? This one's called The Pirate King. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> I right. will become the Pirate King, Bodega yelled, jumping up and down. Right. Bodega, stop shaking the boat, Zico yelled from his position on the bottom of the boat. Sorry, <laughs> Bodega said, laughing. <laughs> why is he, I, why is he laughing so much? He I must don't be know. really excited. Bodega had just gotten his first crew member after saving him from execution. He was planning to go to the Golden War Line, where he could get the treasure hidden by the previous Pirate King. It was a very dangerous place to go and was life-threatening, but many people still went to get the treasure. Bodega had an advantage, though. As a child, he'd eaten a rubber fruit that gave him stretch powers. Right. But it wasn't enough, since there were eight other people in the universe, all pirates, that had other incredible powers. Right. All right, let's go to the pirate line so I can become Tide Pirate King, Bodega yelled. Zico was quiet for a moment, leaning against the side of the boat with his eyes shut. Then he slowly opened his eyes and turned toward Bodega. I already told you to stop shaking the boat! 
Besides, we don't even have a crew. If we go to try to get the treasure now, we would be killed. We need a crew first and you're the captain, so get it together and decide on a plan already, Zico shouted before leaning back again and shutting his eyes. Hey, was there, <laughs> was there any like punctuation you, in that sentence at all? <laughs> no. Was, okay. <laughs> I like you, Zico, Bodega said and sat down with a thump. Zico grunted, and before he could yell again, Bodega said, Sorry, sorry. Bodega sat and thought on a plan for hours before finally presenting a plan to Zico. This better be good, Zico said. I've decided the plan is to get a crew, then go get the treasure. Zico sighed. I'm so gonna die with this guy. The end. Right. Yeah. That was a really good one. Amazing. Uh, I like I like so, the whole uh Bodega becomes a pirate spin and seems really excited about it too, like. I mean, There's a lot of shouting in that one. Yeah, I'm not lots sure. Of laughing, so, shouting, yeah. okay, I've got a few comments on this. First one is that I wonder how many bodegas and also things that you or I am exposed to in real life that I don't recognize because I recognize that this is a, 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 a almost word for word plagiarism. Well, it's not word for word, obviously, but of the anime One Piece. Okay, it's like a pirate anime, uh, whereas there's a kid who eats a rubber fruit uh, and wants to be the pirate king, right? So obviously, this child in this school has watched this anime. Uh, now, you two haven't I any love how idea how about this. you are with anime now. Like, you've uh, really made it like a, a personal goal of yours to, to, to just know anime for some reason. Why have you done this? He's on a what fucking is quest. Remember back in podcast episode fucking three? Join me on my fucking journey. Yeah, I must watch them all. Before passing judgment <laughs> on anime, I will cast my eye upon its entire opus. I must know <laughs> them all intimately. <laughs> Signed, Lewis Brindley, weeaboo, anime-loving nerd. <laughs> Fuck me. Epi uh, episode 1.6, like, wrong. confrontation. The air was warm and dry, unlike Bodega's so we pants. One. Well, yeah, yeah, we did a little that time. That one was like two seconds long. Fuck. Yeah, unlike Bodega's pants. He was cold and wet because he peed cool, cool urine. <laughs> Hang on Wait a second. Start second. this one from How the you top. you can't pee Start cool urine? urine? That doesn't exist. All right. Are you ready? This is weird. The air was warm okay. and dry, unlike Bodega's pants. He was cold and wet because he peed cool, cool urine. He just walked in on his right. wife slash future wife with one of his fellow crew members who had asked to have the day off. Now cool, non-sticky pee was running down his right leg. Drip, drip, drip. It was now dripping onto the floor. They were eating space peanut butter. Bodega's one weakness, it was like his kryptonite. The fellow pirate named Kurt Belt Pants shoved the peanut butter jar of space skippy in Bodega's face. Bodega immediately burst into flames. Majesta, his wife, realized what the Kurt Belt Pants had done, quickly got some space coffee and poured it onto the flaming body of Bodega. <laughs> Relieved he was not very relieved he was not dead. This is Bodega madness. graciously kissed his graciously kissed his wife. The other pirate, however, was not a happy camper. He took a torch and lit Bodega on fire again. Bodega thinking, why haven't I fireproofed my armor yet? But luckily again, his pee cooled him down, so again he didn't die. His wife, now furious, picked up the torch and lit Kurt Belt Pants on fire. He died. Majesta leaned in to kiss Bodega, <laughs> but he stabbed her with his space knife. Doug Bodega knew how to hold a grudge. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> why, why are these kids so obsessed with adultery? Like, every no, no, no. single They're story. obsessed with adultery and One and second pee. he's kissing her, the next session he's like some sort of stone cold sociopath just it's stabbing just so her weird. through the heart. Man, Kurt Holy Belt shit. Pants. Like, oh, he died straight away. Like, I can't yeah. believe it. He, he had so much more to give, I think. A bit of elaboration on his character maybe a bit of development and stuff but no yeah, just lit real. on fire and he's dead that was yeah. some game of thrones right there like yeah just when you get attached to somebody they die the cold Christ. pee yeah nuts Man. do you want one more and then we're, we're done though yeah sure oh my god right. this one's called the oh this is quite a long one actually this has got anime to i don't get know to. it's just it's just large font all right are you ready it's called bodega the crash Bodega, she screamed as the severed part of the spacecraft got caught in the gravity of the nearby planet. Majesta, he shouted back. The severed spacecraft suddenly burst into flame as it was pulled closer to the foreign planet. He only remembered the cries that were silenced by the endless void of space. Earth, this is what they call their planet. On the charts, it was only known as Sol 3, Bodega thought. Bodega groaned. He'd never had a space raid go so wrong. What had happened, he thought. 
All he knew was that he had to build a ship to get back to Cassandra, his girlfriend. He climbed out of the broken ship, blinded by the sun, and started to dig through the parts. He knew he would have to visit a store nearby. He searched the ship again and found a credit card. He then ventured out to find a store that would provide for his needs. Alright, first thing, I don't think Bodega's credit card would be accepted by any major retailer on Earth, because he hasn't been there before. But anyway, he reached a little town and went into one of the stores. The owner was Hispanic, and he guided Bodega to the section that he wanted. He picked out many machines to help him with the spaceship. Bodega ended up buying the whole store. He was not considerate of the person who owned the credit card. Oh, I see. This is why some Hispanic stores are called Bodegas. Ah! It's like an origin story. Oh my god. He used the building as the base of the ship and then attached all of the machines inside to create a fantastic spaceship. Wow. It was time to take off. It was nearly night, but Bodega knew he had to take off now. Bodega pressed the launch button and the store building ripped from the ground and broke through the Earth's atmosphere. When he landed at his home, he found no one there. He only found a note from his girlfriend, Majesta. The note said the following. Dear Bodega, and this is in a different font, by the way, which I like. If you were still out there, I apologize for remarrying. Again with the remarrying! What is with this? Me and George had a child. We named him after you, Bodega. I hope you're alive, and if you are, then please accept my apology. I miss you greatly, greatly, Majesta. Bodega felt a tear slowly trickle down his face. At least he'd survived his fatal crash, and who knows? Maybe he could find love elsewhere. God, Bodega can't catch a break. If, if Majesta isn't treating with cheating on some other, he's cheating on with someone with a fucking moon buggy. She's She's cheating on him with another guy and then saving him and then he's killing her. It's oh just, man, it's that moon buggy said. thing was hilarious. That though. was the funniest fucking Holy thing. Holy shit. I mean, that was the funniest. It feels like that one was written by someone's parents. You know, sometimes <laughs> these parents are like, I, I, what, what's your homework? Let me, let me see it. I want to help out. And so, oh, oh, parents I have to don't write, help have to write a thing about a bodega. About? What do you mean a bodega? What, a local Hispanic convenience store? Do you know what I mean? It feels like, it feels like, I don't know, it feels like, Someone got a bit of help here. I'm just I'm smelling the You're rat. Smelling rat. <laughs> just, just some of the some nice. of the things that was that were going nice. on in that are a little bit too hmm, suspicious. The Hispanic man helped showed Bodega the parts he needed, and he bought the whole store. <laughs> what do okay. you say? You implying uh, that Bodega owners have worked their way into this in some way to kind of get free advertising via this? Is that what you're implying? Like bodega no, operators have clubbed together? Guys, we have to use this opportunity to raise the profile of bodegas by subtly adding bodegas <laughs> into the bodegas. Finally, somebody is giving yeah, you, us exposure that we desperately need. Have you sold out, <laughs> Pflax? Have I sold out to the bodega magnates? To the local bodega? Is this, bodega? Is this yeah. undisclosed sponsored content? It is not. 